We will start with an assessment of upper and lower limb coordination, then proceed to assessing balance with the Romberg test, and finish our exam by examining gait. Hi, Paulina. I'd like to conclude the neurological examination with an examination of your coordination, balance, and gait. Is that okay if we proceed? Yes. Great. I'll just be asking you to do various movements with your limbs and walk for me in certain ways, okay? Okay, great. We're going to start with an examination of the coordination in your upper extremities. We're going to look at fine finger movements first. So what I'm going to ask you to do one hand at a time is you're going to take your index finger and tap it into the crease of your thumb like this, trying to make quick regular movements like that, okay? Could you try that with your right hand, please? There are many ways to test for fine finger movements, but one common exam is this finger thumb test. Look for rate, rhythm, amplitude, and accuracy. Abnormalities in these parameters can indicate different pathologies, and this will be addressed in a separate video. Great, that's good. So I was looking for the rate, rhythm, amplitude, and precision of your movements, and they were brisk, they had a good regular rhythm, amplitude was full and nice and precise, and equal on both sides, so that's completely normal. So we're going to move on to testing rapid alternating movements. There's many ways to do that, but the way I'd like you to do it for me today, please, is you're going to put your right hand over top of your left hand, and you're going to go back and forth like this, again, trying to do it quickly, but making a full movement and aiming for the same spot every time, okay? So could you start with your right hand on top of your left hand and try that for me? Look for rate, rhythm, amplitude, and accuracy of the movements. Try that with your left hand now. That's great, okay. We'll move on to doing the finger to nose test. So as you can imagine, this uh, requires you to take your finger and you're going to touch your nose and then I'm going to hold my finger out in front of you and you're going to go and touch my finger and go back to your nose back and forth like this, okay? So could you take your right index finger and touch your nose and then come and touch my finger here and go back and forth, back to your nose, back to my finger. Look closely for accuracy of the patient's finger and for presence of intention tremor. Great, let's try that with the left arm now. So take the index finger, touch my finger, go back and forth. That's great, okay, that was normal on both sides. So next we're going to move on to tests of the lower extremities and for the first couple of tests, I'm going to want your feet against the floor so I'm just going to reach and get a stool for you to sit on, okay? So would you mind coming sitting on the stool? Great. Sit nice and square with your feet on the floor, and we're going to look at some toe tapping. So one foot at a time, I'd like you to tap your toes like this, as if you're tapping along to music. Make the movements as uh, large and quick as you can, okay? Look for rate, rhythm, amplitude, and accuracy of the toe tap. Great, and try that with the left foot. Normal and symmetric on both sides, that's great. We're going to move on to heel tapping now, so this time I'm going to ask you to lift your whole leg off the floor and tap your heel on the same spot. Again, try to make the movements nice and quick and try to lift your heel about 10 centimeters off the floor. So what I mean is something like this, just tap like that. Try that with your right leg. Again, look for rate, rhythm, amplitude, and accuracy of the heel tap. And try it with the left leg. Great, again, that's normal on both sides. So the next test we're going to do is the heel to shin test. For this one, I'm going to ask you if you can just lift your gown up so we can see your shins. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to take your heel and put it onto the bottom of the opposite shin and slide it up along your shin up to the knee and back down again over and over again in a smooth, uh, rapid movement, okay? I'll show you what I mean. So you put your heel on your shin and up and down like this. Try that with the right leg on top of the left leg first. That's great. Could you try that with the left heel on top of the right leg? This test can be done either with a patient sitting or supine. Look for smooth, coordinated movements of the heel. Perfect. That's normal on both sides. Okay, Paulina, we're going to look at your balance and gait now. Would you mind coming off of the bed and standing up? We're going to do the Romberg test now. I'm going to ask you to stand with your feet close together like a soldier at attention, your arms down the side, close your eyes and 
hold your balance like that. I'm going to watch you to make sure you don't fall, okay? The human body maintains balance through three systems, proprioception, the vestibular system, and vision. Two of these three body systems must be functional to maintain balance. When a patient closes their eyes during a Romberg test, vision is eliminated, so proprioception and vestibular function must both remain intact to maintain balance. If the patient cannot balance after closing their eyes, this, in conjunction with other consistent findings from a neurological exam, may signify that their proprioceptive or vestibular function has been compromised. Have the patient hold this position for at least 15 seconds. Patients with a positive Romberg sign will sway noticeably and may fall, so make sure to stand behind the patient to catch them in case this happens. While this is not necessary, you can test for pronator drift at the same time. Before the patient begins to walk, observe to see if the patient is using any gait aids such as canes, poles, a walker, orthotic shoes, or knee braces. Watch as the patient stands up. Can they stand up smoothly without extra help or effort? As the patient begins to walk, inspect the patient's movements as he or she walks normally. Pay close attention to stance, stride width, stride length, step height, gait speed, arm swing, and 180 degree turns. It's good practice to pay attention to these clues when the patient first enters the room while the patient is not feeling self-conscious about their gait. That's great, thanks Paulina. Now I'd like you to walk a tandem walk, heel to toe as if you're walking on a tightrope. Having your patient demonstrate a tandem gait will exaggerate strain on the postural reflexes, bringing out any truncal ataxia. Note that abnormalities in tandem gait may also be due to poor proprioception, vestibular function, and leg tremors, in addition to a cerebellar lesion. That's great, you could do that normally. I'd like to watch you walk on your tiptoes now, up on your toes, please. Having your patient walk on their toes will test their plantar flexion from the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles supplied by the S1 nerve root. Great, okay, now could you walk back to me on your heels? Having your patient walk on their heels will test their dorsiflexion from the tibialis anterior muscle supplied by the L4 nerve root. Thank you, Paulina. That concludes the gait exam. Everything looked really normal.